Good morning and you're welcome to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. My name is Rume Paulson. And I am Nyamgula Agaji. It's always a pleasure knowing that you are there and having breakfast with us as it is. Today yeah. is Wednesday, oh, Thursday. Thursday, sorry, the 27th of, of June, June uh, mm -hmm. 2024. Uh, for some people who are expecting salaries on the 28th, they'll say, you're drawing us back. <laughs> <laughs> Blood of Jesus. That's not it. It's my mistake. You know. <laughs> Welcome to the show this morning. Yes, on today's breakfast show, we'll be taking several hot topics, one of which El Rufais' Kaduna Assembly over 432 billion Naira probe reports. Another talks about insecurity and says 2,600 dead, 50 communities record um, 135 attacks in a Benue state. We'll also be taking global stories, making headlines in our national dailies as well as some top trending stories. But first, let's check out our quote of the day. to predict the future is to create it and that is by Peter Drucker he was an Austrian American consultant and writer and he says this morning the best way to predict the future is to create it so what does that say to you I mean you have to create it, your future it's, anyway. it's self-explanatory you know exactly you have to invent what you want your future to be mm -hmm. you want to be the next CEO you know that you need to go to school you mm -hmm. need to um, have mentors you have to clean yourself with things that will make you better to become that CEO. So you're mm -hmm. inventing a future, you're predict predicting a future as it were, because you have put everything in place. Mm -hmm. Some things could happen that you may not have planned, mm -hmm. but it is in your hands mostly, maybe 90% of the time, to make sure your future is what you want it to be. Mm -hmm. You cannot bring back the past, but the future uh, depends on you to shape it. Exactly. Um, I mean, a life can happen sometimes. Mm -hmm. I mean, you plan how you want it to be but if you do not plan at all if you do not do anything then guess what you're always going to be stuck in that one place mm -hmm. so, it's, so it is important that you start to say what do i need to do to get to the next level what do i need to do to you know take the next step and all you're doing is having to execute that plan that you've already put in place for yourself so if you want a very beautiful successful bright future and you're just going to fold your, your hands and say, I'm not going to do anything. Life is going to happen anyway, <laughs> right? Guess what? Nothing is going to be done. So I think it's quite self-explanatory. If you want to predict your future, if you want to know how it will go, this is going to be how it will turn out in future, then you have to start making those plans today. So don't sit and do nothing. Make sure that you're aiming towards those goals and putting all the actions in place for you to get there. Yeah, I don't know how my mind is working this morning. When we're mm -hmm. talking about this, I'm just imagining someone who said, oh, I'm going to have two kids. You have the first one. The second time you get pregnant. Yeah, I'm cool. And you're having quintuplets. <laughs> like five <laughs> Life children. happens. <laughs> Life happens. Yeah. Yes. Those are some of the things that could happen to you. Mm -hmm. But you see, you prepared yourself at mm -hmm. least somewhat. Uh, at least when you were expecting your one baby, maybe you bought baby things, um, you know, mm -hmm. many of them. Mm -hmm. So now, instead of one person having five, <laughs> everyone will well, have and, one. And then you but at least you, you planned for mm -hmm. it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And it's just like in the work environment as well. If you're saying this is the kind of career I want, this is the career path I want to mm -hmm. thread on at this point, make, making those plans. Or a course you want to read in your Yes, making those so. plans today, you know, just makes you prepared for the opportunity that is going to come tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So you cannot predict your future when you've not put those things in place f today mm -hmm. saying this is what's going to happen to me tomorrow and whatever happens it can go either way it can maybe it would not happen the way you planned it or it would even surpass your expectations in the first place and guess what it's a win-win for the you the thing is you have a mindset that something good or something better will happen to me i give you an instance some people who run the best salons uh, may have studied nursing in mm -hmm. school, they may mm -hmm. have studied biochemistry or some other thing in school, but they come out, there's no job, they open a shop, and the, you find out they're doing so well yes. because they prepared for a bright future, even if it is not in the line that they wanted, exactly. but they went and had something that bright, uh, broadened their knowledge, mm -hmm. their scope of seeing things and mm -hmm. all that, and it's helping them in some That's why I always say education is not a waste. I, now, I don't mean Can formal formal education, Only. but education is having to have that paradigm shift in your mind, wherever you're like, I can do more, I'm capable of so much more, mm -hmm. and whatever 
whatever life throws at you, even if it throws you lemons, you will just make a lemonade out of it. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not everything to just be a bookworm, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, when, when you're educating yourself, it has to do with interaction as well. Yes. The, the way you interact with people, the things you learn, the places you go to and all that. But you're going to school and you're getting straight A's. It may not translate to success. Mm -hmm. You have to learn what others are you doing. You have to be street smart as well, not just book smart. Yeah, yeah. yeah you yeah, need you everything got, together. It all, it all comes together. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's move over to some top trending stories this morning. Uh, this first one says, ASA claims government misuses tax funds for private universities. The zonal coordinator of the Academic Staff Union of Universities, Calabar Zone, Dr. Happiness Uduk, has expressed disappointment that government officials are destroying public universities in the country and stealing taxpayers' money to fund their private universities. This is as she threatened that the union would embark on another industrial action within two weeks if the federal government did not honor its 2009 renegotiated agreements with the union. Enough is enough. Government officials are not taking care of public institutions, yet they are now establishing their own private universities where they are taking taxpayers' money, our resources, and money too. The federal government has about two weeks to do something, and if not, ASU will down tools. It is not well with us. The government has not treated us well, and to say the least, we are very hungry. Whatever we are getting is not taking us home. We are requesting the government to pay, what, pay us what they owe us. We are calling on the government to make the university system functional. They should cater for universities they brought and not bring up more universities without taking care of them, she said. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, uh, it's happening in every sector. You, you could have a doctor in uh, a public health institution who has a clinic somewhere and there will never be drugs in the public mm -hmm. institution. Mm -hmm. They will always refer you to that clinic mm -hmm. that they run and all You're that. Making money. But the civil service doesn't give room for you to have a business while you're working mm. for, for the, the government. government. But now, uh, when you find that in the civil service and then you look at people who in the public service, like uh, political office holders, mm. having institutions that they're funding, not with their money, like the complaint has been, it's not like they're just talking. It's mm -hmm. something that is true. They're, you're funding, whatever you're funding, it may not even be a university, but something else, with taxpayers' money. I mean, what, what are the things put in place to check this kind of things that mm -hmm. they never happen? Mm -hmm. Because if we just keep leaving them like that, that's how the people who are doing the legitimate work will be suffering, and mm -hmm. those people who are not will just be taking taxpayers' money and then using it for their benefit. Yeah. It's I mean, so, I, I know that, like you've said, if you're a civil servant, if you're in public office, you cannot have, you know, a business of your own or do something that is private. So how do we, what are the checks and balances? That's the same thing how, I'm asking. How, what, what, what do we do? How do we monitor? Because I'm wondering what's the role of EFCC, ICPC, you know, all of this. We have so many is to arrest, institutions arrest you if you're that not are, in the, or in government the, agencies that yeah. are being created and you're not really seeing them being functional where they are supposed to be functional. You can see the police officers or EFCC barging into hotels, arresting people saying they, they were having a Yahoo party. Mm -hmm. But when you're supposed to be checking things like this, especially of people who are in public office, right? If you're in the maybe House of Representatives already um, and you're creating laws, what you're supposed to do is making sure that those agencies are following through. Because making a law is one thing, but making sure that those laws are being upheld mm -hmm. is another thing or else that means everybody would just make laws and no one follows it see the case of the former aviation minister he was uh, he is in trouble with his brother because uh, contracts were awarded to his brother's company so mm. uh, well as we hear we've seen the former governor of Kano state who is now the apc chairman national chairman a, having a court case with the wife with the children and all that when these things were happening where were they where was the EFCC and all that? Immunity is only for the governor. The immunity is not for the wife, it's not for the son, it's mm. not for anybody who is related to him. Mm -hmm. So they could have persecuted those people and then we see where it will end. Even if they extract, they, <laughs> they remove the name mm -hmm. of the governor at that time, but we should have seen something happening. But yeah. not so. 
We've seen in the United States where Hunter Biden, for instance, the yes. son of the, the president, is having a case. Mm -hmm. And he's the son of the president. Yeah. Will it happen in Nigeria? No. So, in fact, I think in Nigeria, it's almost like this, the, the children of the president. Have everybody, everybody, including extended family, mm -hmm. they have immunity. Yeah, and they even have, a, you know, if you're checking social media, it's always son of the president. Like, it's mm. almost like there's an office title, created. Yeah. yeah, it's a title. Almost like there's an office created for that. But we cannot, if, we're not, if we want to grow. Right, if we really look at ourselves. But you know that the, the office of the first lady is not in the constitution. Yes, it's not. Yeah. And so we budget a lot of money for mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. I wonder when a woman wins presidential election in what Nigeria. What happens to the first man? Uh, <laughs> we'll have a first man in an office and then we'll be doing um, empowerment programs mm -hmm. like the women For do. the men. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, because, but it's like surrendering to the men folk and saying you you know what, you are always going to be the president and we will take the office of, of the, the first lady. The, the first lady. Mm. Because mm. if you are aspiring to, all, to also have uh, a president who is a, a female, mm -hmm. then what happens to that office? Which I wonder. I well, just know. Time will tell. Um, so when you become will, president. When yeah. I become president, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's if I'm even looking at that. But what I'm trying to say is, if we really want to grow, we need to be honest with ourselves. Yeah. We need to say this is where we're going to in as 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 Nigerians. This is this is what we're looking at. This is our goal. You cannot tell me that you're taking taxpayers' money and using it for your own business. I, I don't think it's it's even right. Because these are people's blood and sweat. And these same people cannot afford food right now. Mm. Because food is one of the most expensive commodities in Nigeria. But then you, who is a politician or who holds like a public office, you don't even know what the market is saying. You don't go, you don't go to the market. You don't buy diesel. You, don't, you're, you are exempted from the realities of Nigeria. I think you're being and nice. The, you're being nice by people, saying that they don't know. They know, but they don't they care. They don't care. Let yeah. me put it that way. They don't care. And the people who are the ones who are making so much money, creating jobs for themselves even, you are taking money away from them and using it for your own benefit. And what does that say? If that's not wickedness, I don't know what it is. It's witchcraft. And I think the government needs to start to do something about this. I, I think it's time to look inwards and say, look at myself, look at my heart. Is my heart clean? Is my heart good? What am I doing for Nigerians? What am I doing for Nigeria as a nation? And let us, let us be able to use taxpayers' money's rights. Mm. Don't take it for something. Don't deviate the money. Don't, don't, don't take the funds that was meant for something, taking it into your own pocket. That is just wrong. It is not a poverty alleviation scheme for you. No, this Nigeria is for everyone and everyone should benefit from it. I think we should know at this point that um, every individual is the God uh, and the devil at the same time, depending on where you stand. Mm -hmm. Because these people are the ones that swear by the Bible and the Quran. Mm -hmm. And some of them, like it happened uh, not too long ago, swear by Ogun and all that. And, <laughs> and they still leave all these things that they claim to believe in and then do what they want to do. So I, I don't know whether they even have a conscience. How do they see? That's why I said, look at your heart. How, how do, is my heart clean? How will I think as I'm sitting here, if mm. I want to do something really terrible, the first thing I'll be thinking about is your when, would when my you. children, for instance, hear that I am a thief, how, how would they feel? Embarrassment, like, like, yes. I can't even imagine that putting them through that. And then that. you're hearing of people taking up to 80 billion. And they are imprisoned or they are, they are just on the newspapers. This man is a thief. He stole this amount of money. And your children are there. Your wife is there. And everybody's comfortable. How does it, how did how we do get these here? families even? How did we even get oh, here dear. in the first place? It's mm. quite sad and unfortunate. Sad, yeah. Anyways, another top trending story says fire outbreak at Dangote Refinery. There was a fire outbreak on Wednesday at the Dangote Petroleum Refinery in the Lekki Free Zone, Lagos. Though the cause of the fire could not be ascertained, workers at the refinery were evacuated out of the building amidst panic. Reacting to the incident, the Chief Corporate Communications Officer of Dangote Group, Anthony Chiejina, disclosed in a statement, we have swiftly contained a minor fire incident at our effluent treatment plant, ETP, yesterday, Wednesday, 26th of June. There is no cause for alarm as the refinery is operating and there is no record, recorded injury or body harm to all our staff on duty. According to him, the cause of the fire is currently unknown and investigations are underway to determine the extent of the damage and the cause of the incidents.
Mm -mm. Well, it better be. I saw be. this. I saw this yesterday, and I was why I was like, Dangote refinery that we're all banking on. I hope nothing is. It better happening. be an accident. Yes. And the investigation should be a serious one because mm. um, it's not long, long, too long ago when Dangote made a pronouncement that IOC is yes, sabotaging yeah. his operations, and that, uh, that there was talk about adulterated fuel, aviation fuel, even being imported into the country, and all that. And then a week later or something, a few days yeah, later, there's a fire in his... Uh, I think that downplaying what really happened in that place. But w I'm hoping and praying that it should be an accident, just yes. something that... And, no, and not anyone trying fire. to sabotage... Yes. because you know, if this. that is the case, then there's a problem in this mm -hmm. country. We know that there are people who are sabotaging even government policies so mm -hmm. that they never work because of their selfish gains. Mm -hmm. But as as far as we can trace these people out, we should start speaking out. Don't come and be telling us, if I mention names, Nigeria will burn. <laughs> if I do this, start mentioning the names and let us see what can be done about mm -hmm. them. At least name and shame them, mm -hmm. even if you cannot prosecute and them. And that's the, that's the way you can even start to deter others from doing such crimes. Because if you do not make an example of some people, then you are not ready. We need a scapegoat. If there are people who are, you know, not just actually, opposition, anyway. not even the opposition party, if there are people who are sabotaging government policies or are sabotaging anything for the growth of Nigeria, it is important that we start to call them out. If we have to even put them in jail for a time, it's just for, for other people to know that this can happen to me too. And I do mm -hmm. not want to be away from my family. I do not want to, because that whole calling them out and saying, so, so person did this. I think they are now immune to it. There is no embarrassment you don't anymore. Know the names of these so people. it is important that we name, we shame, and we actually bring them to justice. That's the only way, you know, we can move forward. And if really someone is sabotaging Dangote Refinery, it's quite unfortunate because truly, I, I, he had said IOCs are trying to sabotage that. So mm. proper investigation needs to be done yeah. about this so that we know the root cause of the matter and we start to work out of that. Mm. There should be consequences for wrongdoing. Exactly. Consequences, that's the word. Mm -hmm. it, until we get to that point, we may just be talking and talking. Mm. All right, our final top trending story says Fubara explains youth attempted bombing of a Potakot hotel. The River State Governor, Simlang Fubara, has clarified that he is not fighting anybody, but rather defending the state against predators. He asserted that the failed attempts to detonate an explosive device at a hotel presidential in Port Harcourt, um, owned by the state, was a deliberate ploy to threaten the call for a state of emergency by haters who want to undermine the state to achieve their evil plans. Fabara made the assertion when he received, on a courtesy visit, a delegation of the Senate Committee on Privatization and Commercialization. The governor explained that some youths were hired to engage in a protest to demand for extension of tenure of former local government chairmen who have served out of their statutory three-year tenure. He also said the protesters and their sponsors were aware that some members of the National Assembly were guests at the hotel presidential, which is why they attempted to detonate an explosive device near the facility to give a reason to support the call for a state of emergency when the matter is raised at plenary, but they failed. The River State Governor wondered why it seems that the law is silent and or inactive to take its course over offenders because somebody appears to be bigger than the law on the agitation because there is nowhere in the country where tenure elongation for former local government chairman has been an issue. Governor Fubera insisted, I am not fighting anybody. If I am fighting, people will know that I am fighting. My pattern will change. What are we doing? What we are doing rather is to defend ourselves. We can't just fold our hands. There's been a lot of drama in river states and it seems every day is season two season three <laughs> part five and yeah. now bombing of you know the hotel presidential in port Harcourt. i i think it is not funny anymore um the, what is happening is in river state is what could happen in the entire country mm -hmm. if we let that if happen we don't, curb the, it now. We don't curb it now so uh, let me just use this time to call on first of all uh, Governor Dakwa Abiodun, who is the 
um, the chairman of Southern Governors Forum, who has just been elected, uh, to do something about it. Even the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, uh, President Bola Tinubu, even if he's in the opposition party, mm -hmm. if he allows this to continue, then it could spiral into something else. And 2027 is still far away. Yeah. But this politics happening now in 2024, because of 2027, because a lot of people are saying it is because of 2027 mm. this is happening. We don't know what will happen in 2027. Already we saw that what happened in 2023 was a terrible thing where people were pointed at and said that you are a slave, you, are, you don't belong to this and that. Mm. When in Nigeria we've been trying to talk about unity, preaching unity. That's yeah. not what happened in the last election. And that's why I was saying that um, the in thing now is uh, Davido has married Choma. I do <laughs> hope that they will raise children that will be Nigerian children, not just, okay, your mother is from Igbo land mm -hmm. or your father is from Yoruba land. Mm -hmm. These children should be able to function in both As places Nigerians and everywhere first. else. So that is how it is. So if I have a Yoruba wife, I should be sure that it will not make my children inferior in anything mm -hmm. in Yoruba land or in my land or even in the in in the north. Mm -hmm. So what is happening now in River State is a very, very dangerous thing for the Nigerian democracy. And if it is not nipped in the bud, then it could spiral into something else. A bomb where you have National yeah. Assembly members and just to make a statement and it's dangerous. These are people's lives. It's dangerous because if we let it continue and uh, and rivers and other south-south states are very volatile. Mm -hmm. And then you let these things continue. So youths on one side will be coming out with arms. The youths from the other side will be coming out with arms. And then we know that there is somebody who is feeling this, mm -hmm. whether he is coming out to protest with them or not. They're mentioning his name. We know what he is saying. Mm -hmm. And he's still in government. Like taking decisions at the center is still in government mm -hmm. and nothing is being done about it. It will not happen in other places. At all. And, and, and this is a real threat to our democracy. And talking about arms, um, you know, there was the video of, Some people have of died, guns. You know? of so much guns and bullets. I think I saw that. Like, I think the, the video was from the North. But that should tell you how we just think, you know what, it's okay. Mm. It's, just, it's, just, um, it's just ammunition. It's, it's all right. These are people's lives at stake. To the point that we're taking bombs and trying to kill people yeah. do you know to how many statement. if something like that had been detonated do you know it's not even just maybe some national assembly members people and it, like people in the environment as well would be affected why how did we get so bad with our system that we allow things like this yeah. and why is no one saying anything about it well now the governor is saying i'm not fighting anyone yeah. that, that is on one hand the people who are coming out to do these things or agitating... I think the federal government should... should they need to step in now. Its, yes, to put his feet down. Um, well, they have said they have arrested someone or they have discovered, they found the person who uh, detonated the bomb at that place and all that. Uh, they found someone in a hospital that was brought for accident and all. I hope they will do further investigation. Yeah. What if that person is a victim? Because he was brought to the hospital unconscious. The mm. people who brought him are the ones who said it, he was involved in an accident. Mm. What if he was a victim? He was just there yeah, when that bomb went time. off and all that. So investigations should be done. It was too hasty. That announcement that we have caught him and all that, it was too hasty. Maybe, he's not Maybe the perpetrators person. are mm -hmm. somewhere else and just laughing. And he's supposed to be the fall guy. So uh, I, I think our people just make pronouncements too fast. Do your investigation. If he's the one, then let him go in for it yeah. and make sure you find out who sent him. True. Because That's he was definitely sent. Yes. Let's not sweep this under the carpet. It's important that we look through it because, I mean, you don't want this to spiral into other states as well and Nigeria as a whole. Mm. Mm. All right, that's it for our top trending stories. We'll go on a short break, we look at the weather, and when we return, we'll be reviewing the papers. Please stay with us. <laughs>